Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a tree skirt. I've written up a little pattern here and I've got all the fabric requirements and the sizes and I've made a prototype part of the tree skirt here. I always like to do this to make sure that all the pieces are going to fit but I don't think these are the fabrics I'm going to use. I want to use something that's a little bit brighter and more Christmassy. We're going to need five different fabrics. I'm going to need varying amounts between a third and three quarters of a yard. And don't worry about memorizing this. This is just my sketch. By the time the video is done, there will be an actual free pattern and it'll be the first link right below the video. I'm going to use these fabrics that we had printed in Japan recently. They have metallic accents and there's some large scale prints. And since my pieces in the tree skirt are fairly big, I have a nice opportunity to use these big pieces and keep them whole. They don't get cut up too small, so they will look really good in this project. The tree skirt is basically made with one big star. If I pull these away, you can see there's a big star and it's made up of smaller diamonds. Then I took these big squares and filled in around the edges and then we're going to add a border. So the first thing we're going to cut is the small diamonds that are going to go in the middle there. All of the diamonds are cut exactly the same size. So this one is going to go in the center. We are going to need eight diamonds. And so all I'm going to do is cut two five inch strips and then we'll cut those into diamonds. Now I like to put a hand weight on the far end of my plastic ruler. That helps hold this down so that I get a nice accurate cut because the straighter your cuts are, the better your patchwork will look. Now I have two five inch strips and I'm going to stack them up because I can cut four layers all at the same time. So I'm carefully stacking them up and now I'm going to turn these and put them on the 45 degree line that is on my cutting board. So I'm just lining up the cut edge on the 45 degree line here. Now I'm going to make sure I'm beyond the selvage there and I'm going to put my ruler back down on lines that match up on the cutting board here. And I'm just making a first cut here. We'll get that out of the way. Now we're going to measure over five inches. So I can use the five inch mark on here I'm five inches from this cut edge and then I'm going to make another cut and now I've got a nice diamond that's five inches on, it's five inches this way and five inches this way and we can get one more out of this set. So measure over five inches again and that's all eight diamonds that we need from that fabric. This next print is cut exactly the same way, but I'm going to need 16 diamonds. So I'm just going to cut four five inch strips. So now we've got 16 diamonds here and I did cut eight at a time. You don't need to cut that many. Just cut what you're comfortable doing because you do want them nice and accurate. The last fabric we need diamonds out of is this green one here, and we're going to need eight. There's all the diamonds we need, and now we're going to need some squares. Now these are 10 inch squares, and you could use layer cake squares if you have some extra ones. You could even use a patchwork block here. It just needs to be 10 inches. We are going to need eight squares, eight of the 10 inch squares. And this print is just perfect because it's got a large scale and it will look really good in a big block. There are the squares. Now the last thing we need are some border pieces. So we need some pieces that are 10 inches long and four inches wide. And then we need some four inch border pieces. We're gonna need eight of them again but they're gonna be 13 and a half inches long. Okay, all of the pieces are cut and we are gonna start our sewing with the diamonds. Before I stitch these together, I'm gonna to separate them into two piles. So I'm gonna put the fabric that's right side up here and the fabric that's right side down there. The reason I'm going to do this is because 
when I stitch these into bigger diamonds, I want the grains to be going all the same way in each diamond because that will make the um, tree skirt lay flatter. So this is a really good tip anytime you're working with diamonds. It's specific to diamonds. So I'm going to keep separating these and what will happen is all of these here, I will just work with this color first. So you can't see the grain very well from the top, but if I flip it over, you can see the weave, you can see the little threads and they're all going straight right here. Now on this edge over here, they're coming in at the diagonal. It's kind of a bias edge. So we want to work with just diamonds of all the same grain when we stitch them into a bigger diamond. So we're going to use these to make big diamonds and then we're going to use all of these that are upside down to make big diamonds. Now their grain is going the opposite direction from these but let me show you what happens when we put that into a quilt or a tree skirt in this case. So you can see it clearly here because this particular green has a little bit of um, lines on it already. We're going to end up with the grain going straight here and the grain going straight here. We're going to end up with the whole tree skirt with the grain going straight all the way throughout it and then it will lay nice and flat. Here's the pieces for one diamond. So we've got the light, two reds, and a green. So basically I'm going to sew it here, sew it here, and then sew them together. To make these fit, we're going to put them right sides together, but you can't match up the point because if you did that when you opened it, it wouldn't make a straight line. You have to slide this up. You have to slide it up so that when you come in a quarter inch here, there's that intersection right there. There's that little 90 degree angle. And then we're going to stitch down here and the same thing is going to happen at the other end. So watch what happens after I sew it. and open it up, it's making one continuous line here. So I'm gonna finger press this one towards the red, and then I'm gonna stitch this one same way. So put them right sides together and slide it down so that your quarter inch in is coming right at that 90 degree spot there. So let's finger press this one towards the red also. And now we're going to put these two together. So we have to do the same thing here. We can't make them meet there. We've got to slide it back. So we've got a quarter inch right there. And down here at the other end, we've got the same thing happening here. So I'm going to start up here. Make sure I've got that quarter inch down here. And now when we open it up, hopefully we've got a nice continuous line here also. Now sometimes it's a little bit difficult to get this to match. If your seam allowance wasn't perfect, if your seam allowance was too big, they won't meet. If your seam allowance was too little, then they might not, they might be too far apart. But this one's just about right. So we'll finger press that and then we'll go ahead and make all the rest of the big diamonds. Got all of these pressed nice and flat, and I'm just going to trim these few little dog ears off. That's these little guys here, these little points. Now I'm going to take each one of these over to the cutting board. I need to trim off some of this that's going to be in the center of the tree skirt so that we can fit our tree in there. So I'm going to line up the whole diamond on this. I've got kind of a darker line there. So I'm going to put the point down here. So I've got the point right on this line and it's lined up with a straight line behind there. Even though I can't see the line, I can center it between those two lines there. And I'm going to cut off three inches here. So I'm just going to take my, find the three inch line, which is right here. Put my ruler there and cut that off. So I'm gonna do that on each of the big diamonds. I've got all of these trimmed and I've got them still separated so that we've got the grain going the way we want. So this group here, if you look closely here, the straight grain is going straight there. And this group here, 
the straight grain is going straight there. So this is one quarter of our star, and we're gonna stitch it right here. So I'm gonna take these two and put them right sides together, and I'm gonna stitch along this seam right here. So we are going to be doing what's called a Y seam. So that means we're gonna start stitching here, but we're gonna stop when we get to the spot that's a quarter inch from all ends right here. So I'm not gonna sew off the end, I'm gonna stop. And I'm gonna back tack at the beginning here. So when you come to this edge here, you can mark it with a pencil or you can just stick a pin in the way I did. Just go right to that spot, put the needle down, and then back tack. And the reason we're doing that is because we're going to have to fit a square in here later, so we need a little bit of it not stitched right there. When you're doing a Y seam, it's easiest if you finger press the seam or iron the seam open. It'll be easier for the next step if we have that open. So I'm ready to lay out the four quarters. I don't have to worry about the grain now because they're all going the same way. No matter how I spin them, the grain is going to be straight all the way around. Now we can start to see that nice star all around there. So I still have to join these seams here. It's the same method I used with the Y seam but we want to leave one completely open, so just sew these three. So there's the whole star top there. And now we just need to work on those blocks that are gonna go in these corners. So these will be real easy to finish up. All we have to do is stitch this first border onto that side, and then we'll stitch this border onto that side. Press the seam allowance toward the red, and then we will just stitch this on here, and again, press the seam allowance toward the red. Now we can lay this out with the corner blocks and see what it's going to look like. So let's leave the opening up there. And we'll do that part last. Each one of these, they've all got 90 degree angles and they're all going to fit right in these corners. And then the last one will go here. So I'm just going to stitch them on one at a time. So I'm just going to take this block and the whole middle thing and take it back to the sewing machine. I just wanted to see what it was gonna look like. So we need to get this block into this spot right here. It's exactly the right shape. So we're just gonna think of one seam at a time. We're just gonna think of putting these two things together. So we'll put them right sides together and we'll just move this out of the way. And it helps if you know where your quarter inch is, which is right here. And then you can stick this pin right through this spot here. So it's right where that seam ended. It's right where that stitching ended. And so those are gonna to go together. And then we can line up this line here, line up these two raw edges here. And we're gonna start stitching right where that pin is. So I'm gonna leave the pin in until I'm ready to stitch. Lift your needle up. And then you want to See where that needle's gonna go, right where the pin is. Let's get that fabric out of the way there. And I'm gonna take that pin out now because the needle is holding everything in place. And then these are just going to fit right on top of the right on top of themselves. So don't stretch anything, but stitch right down here. Back tack just a little. And stitch all the way off. Now we've got to get this part sewn to this part. The easiest way to do this is to flip this part over. Now we can see where our stitching stopped here and where our stitching stopped there. And all we really have to do is line up these raw edges here and start stitching right where that stitching stopped. So that's where I'm gonna put my needle in. 
put the needle down right there, take a couple stitches and then back tack, but don't back tack over your other stitching, just a little bit. You can always feed it by hand if you need to. Line everything up and stitch all the way off. Now let's take a look at what that looks like in the Y area there. Nice and flat. So when we iron that up, that's just fitting perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and put in all of the rest of these except the last one where the opening is. I've got everything stitched together except this very last block. Now all we're going to do for this one is stitch it just on one side there because we're gonna leave this all the way open so that we can fit it around our Christmas tree. The top is all done, and I'm going to use the flip method to finish the tree skirt here. So that means I'm going to sandwich everything together. The top and the back are gonna be sandwiched right sides together. So I've got this beautiful Christmas print here for the backing, and then I've got a layer of batting here. This is Hobbs batting. It's thin batting. You can get it at any quilting store. So let's get this all smoothed out flat. So I'm gonna put pins in all around the edges here. I've got it laying nice and flat and I did iron it before I laid it out. That will help you get it nice and smooth. So I've pinned all around the outside edges and now I need to pin up where the opening is and around that center. Now I'm gonna trim off the extra backing and batting before I sew around the edges because it'll just get too heavy. So I'm just trimming even with the raw edges here. So we can get all of this stuff out of the way. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to cut in here and go all the way around the circle. All I have to do now is stitch all the way around the outside, all the way around but I'm gonna leave an opening on one of these straight edges. So I'll start right here, and I'll just keep sewing till I get almost back to where I started and leave about a 10 inch opening. I'm coming back around, I'm almost to where I started. Turn this corner. So now we've got a nice opening here that we can flip through. Now before we flip it, we want to trim off these corners here. So anywhere you've got a corner, trim close to your stitching. You can see the stitching a little better from the back side. So we're going to trim off all of these corners like that. And anywhere there's an interior corner, we're going to clip it near the stitching. So I don't know if you can see from that side, but from that side you can see. So go all the way around and make those clips and trims. Here's that opening we left. So we're gonna flip this right side out. So you just have to reach one arm in and pull out all that bulk and then reach to the far end and just keep pulling till you've got it all the way right side out. It's gonna be awfully lumpy at first, but once we get it all the way flipped, we'll start smoothing it out. Now we want to poke out all the corners. So I've got one arm inside here, and I'm just going to poke the corners and smash it flat, go to the next corner, poke it out, smash it flat, and just go all the way around the tree skirt like that, poking out those corners. Now we can just smooth these edges and flatten it out as we go. And you can see how easy it is to get these nice and flat. And I'm just going to keep spinning around and flattening it out. And we'll have our nice big star shape back again. To close up the opening, I've just pinned everything in there. And I'm going to edge stitch right along the edge here to close that up. So I'm, I'm sewing about an eighth of an inch from the edge. And after I get beyond the opening, I'm going to keep sewing. I'm going to edge stitch all the way around the outer perimeter of the tree skirt, and that's gonna make it look really nice. Now I'm gonna do some very simple quilting. I'm gonna go in the ditch, which means 
right along my seam line here. And I'm just gonna go around this big diamond everywhere. You can add more if you like, but it doesn't require a lot of quilting to look good. I've brought in a little Christmas tree. I couldn't bring in my big real one. But this is how this is going to fit around your tree. Now, you may have a big tree stand, but that's okay because this can go up high like this. You can just drape it around so it'll fit no matter what your tree looks like because the opening isn't sewn shut. So you can flatten it out like this. It turned out really nice. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now, if you pick out your own colors, be sure to keep reds and creams around the outside um, because that will make your tree show up better. If you use a lot of green around the outside, it's gonna blend into your tree a little bit better. Thanks for watching our tutorial today on how to make the Christmas tree skirt. We hope you enjoyed it. Now we're going to have another giveaway. I have a great big quilt this time. This is a queen size. And this is Log Cabin, which we make so many of, but the colors are nice and subtle. They have metallic accents. These are all Robert Kaufman prints. So it's very easy to enter the giveaway. Just click that link that's right below the video and it says giveaway. And you put in your email address and your name and we can send this anywhere in the world. Good luck. Now, if you like our videos and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would really help us out. Happy quilting.